Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to find the perfect forehand grip. I'm also going to be teaching you things like a, a grip that a lot of people think is outdated, kind of almost has like a, a bad reputation nowadays. I'm going to show you why you absolutely need this grip and then I'm also going to show you a grip where you get a massive amount of top spin, but I do not recommend it. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the perfect forehand grip. What is the perfect forehand grip? I think it all depends on the style of player you want to be, what's going to end up being perfect for you. There's been so many great players throughout the history of tennis where we would all die for their forehands. Even some players who have what many consider to be an old school grip, they still have really good forehands. So it's hard to say what the perfect grip is, but it's what style of player do you want to be? Do you want to be somebody who hits the ball through the court more with pace but some topspin or do you want to be a player more like Rafael Nadal where you're hitting massive, massive amounts of topspin? I think a lot of this is going to depend on what grip you choose. So the first thing that we want to start looking at is knowing and understanding a racket. Now I'm going to show you as a righty, okay, right here these sections of your racket, these little like square sections of your racket are called bevels. And we'll put up on the screen uh, where we have a better illustration of this, but if you could just follow along with me, and I'll show you as a right-hander, is as we go, we, we basically have bevel one right on top, and then each little quarter turn, you just number it in order. One, two, three, and you go around all the bevels. So a grip that many consider old school and outdated is called the Continental Grip. And it's where you shake hands with a racket and right here, this part of your, your finger, right, your index finger right here, this part is going to meet up with bevel number two and, and you're shaking hands with the racket. Now, back in the day, a lot of pros used to play with this continental grip, okay? And what they could really do is have excellent control and a lot of skillful shots to where they could chip through the ball. They could still hit topspin through the ball. They could hit lobs. They could hit drop shots. And many people out there watching this video probably think, well, I don't want that. I want to be able to rip it like Roger Federer, like Rafael Nadal. And you actually cannot skip the continental grip, okay? Do not skip the continental grip. And even your favorite players use the continental grip on their forehand. Have you ever seen a professional slide way off the court like Novak Djokovic, like Gumby, like he does? Well, most of the time when he's making that shot, he's in that continental grip getting the ball back. Have you ever watched a doubles match where there's a nice defensive lob at your club or on TV? That's made with a continental grip. Have you ever seen a pro set up and rip a big forehand and then all of a sudden hit a little drop shot? They're using the continental grip, so you cannot skip this. Plus, once you get comfortable with a continental grip on the forehand, it gets easier to get comfortable with a continental grip on a slice backhand, or your volleys, which are in the continental grip, or your serve. Are you starting to see something? You actually use a lot of shots with that continental grip. In fact, you could argue the only grip that needs to change might be the forehand topspin shot. Okay, so just remember that. Just remember that, that even though you're not going to be using your continental grip forehand to really be ripping through shots and hitting and adding massive toss spin, you still want to get comfortable with it. I still recommend you go out some days and practice just hitting and rallying with a continental grip and get good at it. And you're going to find that you're going to add a lot of shots to your arsenal. Okay, let's get on to the second grip, which is called the Eastern grip. Okay, so the Eastern grip, all we're doing is making little quarter turns and really focusing on this part of the hand right here. Just make a little quarter turn and now the strings are going to start to face down towards the ground. And by the racket shading towards the ground, this is where it becomes easier and easier to create topspin. Okay, but there is a point of diminishing returns as I'm going to explain to you later in this video. And even though we're talking about the bevels, one thing I don't want you to do is get obsessed about what bevel you're on and wondering that when you're playing a match. 
just kind of, it's like you want to find like what's perfect for you. As you turn over, just know you're adding more topspin. What feels perfect for you rather than worrying about what specific grip you're in. But if you just make that quarter turn, you are in an eastern grip. This is the grip that Federer uses and what Federer is able to do because of this grip, notice when he gets ready, he puts his racket and it's facing towards the ground. He goes into a lag just like Rafa, just like Novak, and then he rips that ball. And you can see that ball is spinning right there off my Tospin Pro. If you're interested in what this Tospin Pro is, I'll put a link in the description so you can go check it out because it is a, a great tool and, and something you can really play with to practice all the different types of grips and figure out, I missed that there, and figure out what's your favorite grip. So now I'm going to pick up the normal size standard racket and uh, again show you what are the benefits of that eastern grip. The benefits of the eastern grip is you can hit the top spin, but you can also drive through the court. Notice Federer when he hits the ball. A lot of times his ball appears to be getting faster through the court than a lot of his opponents because he takes the ball early. He takes the ball early with that eastern grip, he can just keep the ball low and rip through it. Oh my gosh, I actually wish I would have put that in the back because we just nailed that shot and it got through the court in a hurry. So that's a big, big benefit of having an eastern grip. We'll take a look at some from the back. Okay, so the next grip I'm going to show you most of the pros on tour are using today and that is a semi-western grip. And if you're somebody who is using an eastern grip but you still don't feel secure, your balls are still flying on you and you want more topspin, that's what the semi-western grip can do for you. And this is why most pros like it and use it because they feel like they're getting that perfect blend of power and spin, which is kind of what we're all searching for. It's, uh, it's different for everybody, but we all have in our mind, what is the perfect blend of power and spin? And for most people, it's holding that semi-western grip. And it sounds super advanced, and you might not have a semi-western grip, and it might be a mystery to you, but the best part about the semi-western grip, if you want to learn how to use it, is it's super simple to find. All you've got to do, literally, I'm promising you, this is all you have to do, is just drop your racket, pick it up, and you are in the semi-western grip. It should look like you've got a frying pan and you can start cooking an egg. If you're doing that, you know you've got it right. All right, so it's simple as that. That's pretty cool. Now, what can this grip do for you? Well, notice how easy the strings are facing towards the ground. You're not gonna have to do any kind of shading with your wrist to make it face the ground. It's gonna be facing the ground automatically right away. So as you continue to go back in your swing and go into your lag, the string keeps facing the ground, so as you come up to the ball, you add massive spin. As you see that Tossin Pro, it's really, really turning over and over and quickly. Now, the cool thing about this is me seeing that happening to the ball is going to give me more confidence to swing at the ball faster and know that it's still going to go in. And when I need to, I can put the ball higher with spin and I can also hit it lower through the court. Maybe not as easy as an eastern grip, but I can still flatten the ball out and punish it through the court. All right, so that's what's important about having this grip, and this is where you can really hit your heavy balls. All right, the last grip I want to talk about is the full Western grip. Now this is a grip used by Jack Sock, Ernest Golbus, and this is a grip I recommend you do not use. Why do I say don't use this grip? You can use it. There's some people out there, hey, if you've if you got a great Western grip and you love your forehand, I'm not telling you you have to change, okay? This is not a changing video. This is thinking about it. Should I do this or not? And for people who have never done this, okay, the way you find it, first of all, is you put your racket out here and you basically grab under it. Just try and do that. Now, you are in a full western grip. Now you can see certainly those strings, they almost face, appear to face like backwards that way and then you come and hit. Now as you go to hit that forehand, the positive is you're going to get a lot of massive topspin on your forehand. Easy, okay? But go try it. I'm going to put the camera in the back. I just got a couple balls left. I'm going to show you how 
I, I cannot really do this grip and it's really, really hard for me to figure out how to put any kind of power on the ball. So I got that big western grip and as I go to swing, it's really, really hard. You see I put a lot of spin on it, but it's very hard to get the ball deep and it's very hard to get the ball flat. And a lot of you, that ball was, was not so bad, a lot of you are going to have trouble flattening the ball out through the court. You're going to hit a ton of balls in the net. So I recommend that you don't do that. Okay, so my final rant or slash point on the full western grip is when you watch even the best players in the world have a full western grip, the contact looks ugly. They're leading with the elbow, the ball appears to be pretty and close, and they're hitting the ball like this, okay? So even the best players in the world who have a western grip, that's what their forehand's gonna look like. And for most of us, that's gonna be tough to figure out how to get power. I'm not saying you have to be full straight arm, but the more you're able to come out and have a wider wingspan and hit the ball, you're able to have this rotational power come through. That's why a lot of coaches will teach a straight arm forehand. And I don't think you need to be obsessed with making sure every time you hit it's completely straight, but it does add that rotational power. It's easy to come through. Look, it looks a lot cleaner. As I'm doing this, this looks a lot cleaner to come through than hitting the ball like this. And most people have trouble with their spacing. So hopefully this really gets you started on your forehand journey. I actually went on a forehand journey last year. I worked with the best coaches on the planet. Rick Macy, who coached the Williams sisters. Uh, Sophia Kennan, who won the Australian Open this year. He's been given the credit of coining the phrase, the ATP forehand. So he's got the ATP forehand blueprint for you. I took a 55 minute lesson that we recorded that I want to share with you. I'm going to share some of it right now with you. I also took a lesson with Jeff Saldenstein, who former top 100 ATP pro. He's got a ton of subscribers on YouTube. Make sure you check him out. And also Dr. Mark Kovacs, who works with all the top American pros. I'm playing commercial for it right now, so you can figure out if it's right for you. If you like are intrigued by it, go to the description below and click on that. Also, we're coming up Tennis Con 4. This is where I work with the best coaches on the planet. The best coaches on the planet. And our theme this year is helping you play bigger. Bigger tennis, hitting bigger serves, hitting bigger forehands and backhands, better volleys playing big, playing big in matches to where you're not just a shell of yourself. You're out there playing big, confident tennis and you're training big as well, getting the best shape of your life. So I want you to also check that out as well in the description. Sign up, get your early pass. We're doing that in October. And also if you kind of thought that Tosman Pro looked cool, you can go in the description and click that. And of course, guys, I'm now over 40,000 subscribers. You gotta help me get to 50,000 subscribers. Sub subscribe to this channel if you love tennis and you want more lessons like this. I'm making videos weekly, almost daily lately. So smash up that subscribe button, hit the like button, and comment. Let me know what else you'd like to see and if you enjoyed today's video. It's Pete from Crunch Time Coaching, sign off. We'll see you on the next video. Time to develop a forehand with massive power and spin without having to give up accuracy and consistency, without having to spend hours and hours on the court each and every day for the rest of your life, and without having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on lessons that don't work. My name is Peter Freeman. I'm the founder of Crunch Time Coaching, and I have assembled the best forehand training on the planet with the world's best instructors. On this Upgrade Your Forehand Challenge, I've worked with Rick Macy, who has worked with the Williams sisters, Andy Roddick, and now the 2020 Aussie Open champion, Sophia Kennan. Jeff Saldenstein, a former top 100 ATP pro who's one of the best online instructors in the world, and world-renowned sports psychologist, Jeff Greenwald, who's also one of the best players over 50 in the world. And finally, leading sports physiologist in tennis, Dr. Mark Kovacs. I was on a mission to learn the truth on what truly makes a great forehand so I could bring the coaching gold back to you. So if you finally want to separate the truth from the lies, throw out all the junk and clutter that just holds your game back, you've come to the right place. After playing and coaching out for nearly 40 years, I've compiled everything you need to know to transform your forehand into an upgrade your forehand challenge. And right now I want to share with you a three part free training series. You see, I focus solely on the totally obsessed adult tennis player. Players who want the latest and greatest cutting edge information on instruction, proven to get results that local coaches either don't know or refuse to teach you. I've now helped 7,332 totally obsessed tennis players inside my training programs, and I'm gonna help you too. Introducing the Upgrade Your Forehand Challenge three-part free training series. You can enroll now and join 
hundreds of other Toy Obsessed Tennis players just like you over the next seven days to finally unlock power you didn't know you had, gain control and spin that's been missing for years, and turn your forehand into a true weapon that dominates in matches. When you enroll for my challenge today, you're going to get free coaching on the forehand from Rick Macy, Jeff Solomstein, and Dr. Mark Kovacs. Learn the five things Rick Macy taught me on the forehand that was robbing my forehand of power for my entire life. See Dr. Mark Kovacs teach me how to add 20 miles an hour of easy power to my forehand within 30 minutes and learn how to hit rocket ship inside out forehands with Jeff Solomon. If you're sick and tired of hitting your forehand like an amateur and not having the confidence to step in and swing freely, regardless of scoreboard pressure, the time is now. If you've tried private lessons that cost tons of money with lackluster results, or you signed up for dozens of other coaching programs that didn't work and are ready to stop this vicious cycle of disappointment and finally learn a simple, doable method that works for myself and my students, the time is now. Enter your information below. I spent over $6,000 of my own money producing this course so I could share the coaching gold with you. And I want you to start upgrading your forehand right now for free. If this is where your forehand transformation finally begins, wouldn't it be worth it? Click the link and get started. Get free access to the very best forehand coaching on the planet, and I'll see you inside.